Okay, so back at the start of July, Google hired, or kind of accu-hired, the team from Windsurf. And by the team, I mean basically the founders and some of the core engineers. They actually left, I think, over 200 people at the startup. And at the time, it was quite a big deal because Windsurf was on track to be bought by OpenAI for over $3 billion dollars. And once that deal fell through, Google came in and scooped up this core team for $2.4 billion. Now we're a little over four months later, and this team has delivered their first product after joining Google DeepMind. And this product is what this video is all about. This is the new agentic development platform from Google DeepMind called Antigravity. And in this video, I'm going to go through and show you the key parts of it, what makes it different than some of the other more traditional agent IDEs that are out there, and talk about how you can get started using it yourself for free. Okay, so the core idea behind this is that Google DeepMind is officially entering the sort of editor slash IDE space with a fully agentic IDE. So listening to some of the developers that created this, they talk about the sort of three pillars of the design in here. The first one being autonomy. And the idea here is that this is supposed to reflect the trend of moving to more asynchronous work of agents. So we've seen some products out there like this before with things like Jules, with some of the stuff from Codex, etc. But the idea with anti-gravity is that this asynchronous sort of work style will actually work locally on your computer. And it's only one part of this. As you'll see when we start to go through it, that there's also a key element of having the traditional IDE editor and of being able to make use of browser use, etc. The second pillar of design that they talk about is this whole idea of trust, verification, and self-improvement. And this goes a lot to how the agents are actually set up to work. So the agents actually create a series of artifacts that both help them to be better at what they're doing. So things like planning, things like using research and creating a sort of product requirement stock beforehand. But not only that, they also create artifacts for when the agent is actually finished running. So you can actually look at a walkthrough and then see in that walkthrough what was actually done by the agent. And the third pillar that kind of sets this apart a little bit is this whole sort of agent first paradigm. So I've already been talking about how they're using agents in here. The idea, as you'll see as we go through it, is that you really want to start with agents in an asynchronous way to actually build things for you and then only later on be able to drop into more sort of synchronous ways of looking at what's going on and then be able to drop into the editor to actually make changes that you want to. So if you actually look at the name and the logo here, one of the developers of it said that they chose the name anti-gravity to basically convey the idea of making this more weightless. So the logo itself is actually supposed to be like the inverse of a gravity well, which has so much gravity that it's sucking you down. The idea here is that this is the opposite of that and making development, especially agentic development, weightless and easy for you to use. So let's jump into the app itself, have a look at how it works and what actually makes it different. Okay, so when we open the app, we get what's like a standard editor. And this is the editor for anti-gravity, like VS Code. And the first time you run it, you can import your VS Code settings or your cursor settings, etc. In many ways, it's similar to what cursor has, right? Where we've got the sort of chat planning, whatever it is over on the right side. And then we've got the standard VS Code editing tools in the rest here. Now, this is one of the three services that you'll interact with code in here, but it's probably not the main one. So the second sort of interface window here is the agent manager. And the whole idea with this is this is where you basically create agents, launch agents, do all the sort of asynchronous stuff for your particular project. Okay, so you can see here, I'm going to kick off a conversation where I'm going to ask it to build me a Next.js app that shows off different levels of gravity on Earth, Mars, 
the moon, and even anti-gravity. Make each example its own page, use Tailwind and Shad CN for CSS, and make it look beautiful. All right, so I can kick this off now, and you'll see that it goes straight into this. Now, if I look at my inbox here, I've got different agents doing different things. Now, the other ones have finished for now, but we can see that this one is clearly running. And we can see that very quickly it produces what's called an implementation plan. Now, the implementation plan is one of the key artifacts that anti-gravity uses to basically create a PRD for what it is that you want to make. And you'll see that as I go through this, I can see it's basically planning out the core components, the pages that it's going to have for each of the things that it's making in here, and sort of a way to do verification. At any point, I can come in here and I can say, I can add in a comment. So in here, I can put in something like, make the colors for each page match that planet or moon. And I can actually put in this comment in here. And this will be injected into the agent later on as it's actually building. And this is one of the things that I think is really interesting is that even once you've got the plan, you can go in and edit this plan on the fly. So rather than having to wait till you get to the end and then go back and edit different things, this can actually go through and do it on the fly. Along with the implementation plan, it also makes a set of tasks. So you can see here, the task list is initialize a Next.js project, run NPX, create next app. Then it will go on to actually build the different parts and apply a polish and verify that it works, etc. So this idea of artifacts helping your agents, once these are created, they're used at different points and they're updated by the agents as well. Now, another thing that you'll notice is that I basically set it for the agent to decide whether it will proceed or ask me for permission in this case. So obviously if you're doing always proceed would be your YOLO vibe coding kind of run. So far in my testing, I found this to actually work pretty well is that the agent can decide when it needs to come back to you and when it's just fine to keep going for this. But if you wanted to, you can also request that you review everything and basically approve each of the tasks going through here. Obviously, the model that I'm using in here is Gemini 3 Pro. And as I understand it, the plan is to support both things like the Claude models, the Gemini models, and maybe a couple of other models going forward. All right, we can see at this point, checking back into our app task list, that it's done the initialization of the app. It's creating the gravity simulation components now, creating the layout and navigation for this. And I can come in here and fire off another agent to actually do other things in here. So you can see now I've fired off another agent and I've got two agents going asynchronously. This one is actually building the app and this one is going to be checking the nav bar. So at this point, there's really not a lot it can do. I don't know if the nav bar is actually there but you'll see that it's searching for the dev bar. It hasn't really found that. Oh, okay. It might find it because we can see, sure enough, dropping back in here, our pages have been created and the styling, etc., is going on there. And this brings us to the third sort of interface, and that is the browser. Now, the browser here, you'll notice that it's got this blue sort of glow around it. This basically means that the browser is currently being used by an agent. So while this is a normal browser, it's just Chrome, you actually install this anti-gravity browser extension in here. And then once you've got that set up, anti-gravity can actually use this browser to be able to do a whole bunch of different things. And we can see that it's already using it as I'm trying to show you things. It's basically resizing things and trying things out, etc. And it could be testing a whole bunch of different things that we've got going on in here. You can think of the browser as, in this case, looking at what it's been building and seeing, okay, is that better? What's good? What's not good? And stuff like that. Testing kind of things. But it can also use the browser to actually go off and get context for what it's actually doing as well. Okay, so going back to our first task, we can see that this is basically done. 
let's have a look at what it actually built. All right, so in the actual browser, it's basically run this. I haven't had to do anything to run it. I can come in here and we can try out the different things that it's made for the demo here. So we can see that, okay, this is the Earth gravity. This is Mars, okay, and this is the moon, obviously getting lower and lower gravity as we go along. And then let's see, what do we actually get for anti-gravity? So this actually goes up, right? This is what we would expect. Okay, so we can see it's done a pretty good job. It's made a nice nav bar. So it actually, I don't think it actually started out with this nav bar. Let's go back into the agent and we can see that actually the nav bar one is still going and it's resizing things. It's going through changing things on the fly. Now at any point we can just come in here and go into the editor. And you can see now in the editor here, I've got a standard place where I can edit the code. So I can just come in here if I wanted to go and see, okay, what was the earth page like? I can see what the code is there. Obviously I can do all the things that I would do in a normal editor. In I can also go through and see any diffs about what's changed and stuff like that going through this. The other thing that's really key is that I've got this walkthrough and the walkthrough basically is going to go through, we can see it's in the background there, it's working on our nav bar. So it looks like it's created a mobile version there, but the walkthrough, it allows you to basically see what has actually been done in here. And it's sort of like giving you a readme of, okay, if you wanted to run this, how you would run it, any sort of notes and stuff like that in here. And so we can see here, for example, what changes it's made just by looking at the diff in here from the original create next app to being our gravity demos app in here. Okay. And at this point now, each of those agents is done. What I can do is I can give it another task. I can ask it to actually go in there and make me some screenshots for the earth and the Mars page in here. So to actually do this. It needs to work out, okay, what it's going to actually do. And it needs to actually use this sort of browser sub agent that's going on. And you can see that the tasks here is pretty simple. And we can see, sure enough, it's come over to the earth page. It's making the screenshots and stuff for us. And you can see, we've got this screenshot in here. One of the cool things that we can do is we can actually mark this up. If we said here that. I want the ball to be blue color and the earth title to be the same color. Now I've actually put in a comment on there that's giving it feedback on this actual screenshot that it's made here. Okay. So while that screen capture has been running and stuff like that, I came in and started running another task. And the task here was actually, I wanted Nano Banana to make some designs of the ball dropping, but my prompt wasn't very good. I basically wrote, generate some designs for the ball dropping UI with Nano Banana. So sure enough, it's used Nano Banana in here to actually generate a design of the Nano Banana dropping. It's then gone off and started to actually code these pages. And it, this has been going on while the actual other pages are doing the screenshots and doing the changes there. If we come in here, sure enough, our earth has now changed to blue. The Mars ball is changing to red. So that looks like it's working like we wanted. And I think it's made a nano banana page now. So let's look at that. Okay. So if we come over and look at this, sure enough, we've got a nano banana page now where we can actually drop the banana going on there. Now the agent is taking over that bit. Now, if we drop the banana, sure enough, we've got a bouncing banana going on there. And if we come back and look at our different pages for the earth, we've got that. Let me just open this up a bit. Earth, we've got that for Mars. We've got our red ball for the moon. We've got our white ball and for anti-gravity, we've got this purple kind of ball. So I'll leave it there. You can see what actually is going on. I hope you can get a sense of how the agent manager works, how we get these artifacts for each of these, where we can see an implementation plan for this, 
the actual tasks that it goes through, etc., And then the walkthrough of exactly what was done with a screenshot to show, okay, that this is what it was done, how it was done, etc. Actually edit everything in here. We'll look at the code, etc. in here. And of course we could add things to Git. We could do that and we could get the agent to help us do that as well. And you can see from the overall project that the browser here is both used as a sort of simulator to check what's actually going on in the browser. We could also have used this to actually go out and do some research and bring in docs, bring in different context for the actual model and the app to work. So that's anti-gravity from Google DeepMind. So currently there's no pricing available for this. What I've been told though, is that there's gonna be a very extensive free plan where you'll be able to use this. And then my guess is as Gemini 3 rolls out more, we will see some kind of package for pro users or ultra users that will be able to make more calls and use more tokens, etc. So let me know in the comments what you think about this. For me, it's definitely an interesting sort of step forward. It does seem that in some ways, some of the ideas are similar to what Cursor has done recently with agents. But don't forget this as a new product has been made in the last four months. So most people are just seeing it now, but it has existed as they've been iterating on this internally. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Love to hear your opinions. As always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.